being an entrepreneur, starting from difficult times, you yeah. learn how to weather the storm, should I say, in a polite way. True. So you're strong enough to adapt to the situation. But we adapt in the best way possible to continue running the business at the best optimum that we can. So, so what, what is it like to be able to be at that point of literally shifting, shifting the way you do business, re-looking at your business plan, re-looking at everything? How is it to you? The good thing I th with how I set up my model was not very strict. It was, it's quite flexible. Yeah. So it was, not, it was quite, it was reasonably easy yeah. to adapt to the situation, Correct. which has not really had too many costs on us. Mm, or held us lean, back. Yeah. So it's it's it has been quite fair. It has been fair on us. It has not been bad yeah. due to our model because we were quite flexible. We're not very rigid that it has to. We can only do it this way. Yeah. So we're quite flexible to adapt to different methods of working. Yeah. True. True. Because at the end of the day, we we have to look at this thing from how people are looking at it. There are people who this is the end of the world. Correct. And there are people who okay, this one I can work with. I can rethink. So so. What has it been like to friends, people you know, uh, who've lost their jobs, who've gone for pay cuts, pay cuts mm. and all such things? Some of them who've literally shut down their businesses. businesses. Like I was mentioning to you earlier, the governor of the central bank was saying 75% yeah. by end of July vanished that's, of SMEs. That's, and that's, that's, huge. A, that's a big part of the economy yeah, as well. That's, that's huge. Employment as well. Yeah. So that means unemployment goes up. Yeah. Insecurity, like we were discussing. Yes, yes. And then leads to lower growth rate. Correct. Like, yeah. the, like I was mentioning earlier about transnational barriers. Yeah. You see, that's why the West, like China, or not necessarily the West, but China, India, Brazil, yeah. Yeah. the growth rate is so high, is why they can compete in yeah. mass production. Where oh, us, yeah. where we focus on specialized because we don't have the budgets. Mm. That's why we go to the West for lower interest rates yeah. or for funding. Oh, because their money is cheaper. It's cheaper. And also for us, we cannot afford that kind. But if we do, as a continent, we can have a massive boom. Yeah. But I guess the numbers, we're not as many as... Correct. Like, like um, one city in India could be Kenya. Uh, correct, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's a huge, huge difference that sometimes we don't... 1.4 billion is the population. We had 48, 46, yeah. somewhere there, if I'm not wrong. As, and, chi as and China is about 1.8, 1.9. Oh, yeah. That's half, yeah. like, almost uh, billion. just uh, 40 percent odd of the world population. So. Yeah. So Africa could be if we could join as Korea. one, and we could get. But the the issue with us is the funding. Yeah. We don't have the funding. True. Our budgets are very low. So local funding is 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 not the way to go. There's also there's like those countries they have banks called something called a credit asset bank, credit facilities. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they borrow at three percent. True, true. See, our rates are much higher. Yeah, yeah. So again, that advantage and we don't have. Rate, so they don't have that, that fluctuation. fluctuation. Mm, that's so, very interesting. So those are the things that we and must keep in mind. stimulus packages. So all these stimulus packages coming out, we, we don't have any stimulus package. No. So we are on our own, literally. You could say that, yes. Look at the states, 2.2 trillion, round one. Round one. Yeah. Mm. And they'll get more. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They say, they as well had uh, at least some stimulus. Some stimulus, so, yes. Yeah. So, 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 are we disadvantaged to be in this jurisdiction? Would you say that? I think that answers. It's quite. It can go both ways. Yeah. There's an advantage. I guess also for them, there's the plus and a minus. True. But the advantage here is also that we can specialize and get quality out of what we do. Yeah. Which allows us to compete. Yeah, yeah. So okay, not on the numbers level, but in terms of quality and product, yeah. we can. Then our infrastructure is early Correct. stage. Mm -hmm. The infrastructure is developed. Mm -hmm. So opportunities as well, when you look at it from that point of view, unless you're a big player, it's it's quite hard to, to make it through. Probably like the UK, SA. Yeah, because most people are established and the established guys are giants. Correct. Yeah. But here we have, we, we, three things are green, sufficiently green to be able mm -hmm. to, for us to be able to now innovate, have new things, mm -hmm. solutions, mm -hmm. solutions are coming, uh, people know of solutions, then now we get to develop them here and the acceptability is, is coming up well. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's interesting. It is. 
something interesting is, especially when people, uh, I've, I've skipped intro intentionally. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll introduce ourselves no problem. In, a, in a bit, but something interesting. I just want us to be able to unfold something interesting about enterprise and entrepreneurs is uh, the element of just being able, like you mentioned, to adapt, to adapt, mm -hmm. to adapt. But for us to adapt, especially failure, becomes a key thing that helps us to adapt. Correct. The amazing thing about your story is the story of against all odds, mm -hmm. against failure. And it's not just personal failure, mm -hmm. it's, it's coming from a point of family. Mm -hmm. Probably you can talk about that a bit. Yeah. I'll so I was from, okay, <laughs> my name is Zamir Virgi. <laughs> so I was from a, a quite a prominent family, yeah. was very well off. And uh, I'm the seventh generation in this country. Seventh. Seventh. So and a generation is 50 years plus. Yes, you could say that. Yes. Cycles. Yes, so we can say from 1882, my, my wow. forefather, my great, 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 great grandfather was here. Yeah. And then we were in the fish business. Mm -hmm. Then went into transport, but in, and then the fish business went into receivership in 2000 or 1999 due to the yeah. cholera, cholera in the Lake Victoria. Oh, I remember. So the ban for exports. Mm -hmm. So we went into transport. That's when China now started bringing fish. There you go. Then we went into transport and then receivership in 2010. And I was in my second year in uni, no, my third year in uni. UK, yeah? UK, yes. University of Kent. So. It took a while for all of us to adapt because it was literally like going zero, start from minus. So having that mindset of always being in an, yeah. like in that in business and yeah. dealing with big like big things, it was something that I couldn't. Things were working. Things were working. And By then, the time you left home, actually things were working no, very well. So you're coming back to nothing. Crazy. Even to get that ticket to come back was, come back. was also a, was, was a passion. You come into a home you don't know. It, it was not even the home I used to live in. <laughs> oh, yeah. it was everything was just different. So I came. I said, "There's no way. Yeah, I have to get back or start the ladder. Even if it's very small, but I have to start somewhere." How come you didn't think of just staying in the UK after knowing what's happening at home? I know the opportunities here, mm -hmm. and I know what I want. Yeah. Moreover, I don't want to be employed. Yeah. Because that time you were young, you were quite yeah. young. By the time you were talking yeah. like this. 22. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you come home? I come home. Of course I knew what was going on. Yeah. Of course the moods and morals are yeah, obviously not see. very good. Yeah. Everyone's trying to do what they can. Survival. The survival. Yeah. And then you try something, you fail. And you've used your very minimal resources that you have. Now that makes it harder. Like yeah. you said, but the failure is what? allows you to get stronger, 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 yeah. and also see also what you're doing wrong true. when you approach something new. Yeah, true. So true. now when I'm approaching a new investment or a new business now, I've learned from that. Mm. I will still make mistakes, I'm sure. Thanks to that, you Thank, have a backbone. A backbone, but I will still make a mistake today and learn from it for the future. Yeah. But it is, I'll be in a better position now than I was then. Yeah. So yeah. How, how, how is it for your parents? Because, you know, when you're fresh, you're young, you're fresh, you have energy, you have... Mm -hmm. you, can, mm -hmm. you can fight it. Correct. What happens to your parents who, at that point, without a doubt, they're not as fresh and young as you are. Mm -hmm. So, you know there's fatigue, there's business Na fatigue. Naturally. Yeah. But I'm grateful. They were, of course, I don't think any parent would want to, to see their children through a difficult situation. Yeah. But they were also very supportive and very strong and they, they used, I think, more energy than they've ever used their whole life. <laughs> so, they had so they just pushed till today. Keep fighting and we keep working together as a team. Yeah, yeah, that's that's amazing. Mm -hmm. How do you take that and relate it to COVID? What what did that do for you that you can use now? Of course, when you have to do cost cutting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, flexibility, adaptivity, yeah, your normal day to day bills, or whether it's your basket of goods, yeah. so your home shopping, is it your luxuries, your Some eating. Things will have to wait, but. You've been through it, so, you know, it's not that it's, ah, I'm, I'm going to now yeah. collapse if I don't go there, or I don't eat that, or I don't do that, before. or if I don't drive that, or if I can't mm. do this or that. I haven't. Yeah, yeah. And fortunately, whatever I could do, what I want to do, I'm still doing. I'm happy. I'm very grateful to God for whatever I have. Yeah. Even the food on my plate, you know, the rents, whatever we meet. Yeah. 
That's very important. But what, what, what is that? What, where do you get that mindset? Because there's someone who, like you mentioned, I'm, I have things that I'm grateful about. But there's someone who is only saying things that are not working, things that are not well. They can mm -hmm. count for you everything that is bro broken or breaking. How, how do you get to that state of mind of saying, you know what, it's not as it used to be, but it's fine? Several things. Okay. I went through <laughs> a lot of ups and downs. Like, yeah. for example, having to survive in the UK yeah. and get back here. So that already makes you strong. So, but again, me and you and us here, we all have good and bad things that yeah. we're dealing with yeah. as we speak here. Yeah, at the here. moment, yeah. So, but if I'm going to concentrate on that, yeah. the, the positive I have is going to now start becoming negative. Yeah, because it's swallowed. It, and don't look at other people. Or be happy with what you have. Yeah. And most importantly, like for me, I'm God-fearing. I, I thank God for everything. And I, I always know it's God's timing and God's speed. Yeah. So I always leave it to that as long as I do my part. True, true, true. What, what, what do you tell an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur who's so caught up in the image, what they drive, where the whole persona mm -hmm. of a 21st century entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and now they're caught up in this thing of, I have to let go something, otherwise I won't survive. Mm -hmm. But they just don't know how to let go. They mm -hmm. don't know how to prune the tree. Mm -hmm. What do you tell, tell such a guy? Okay, well, no, if he's come from a humble start, yeah. he will not find it hard. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not about others because who's putting food on your plate is yourself. Yeah. So if I'm going to use all my earnings or my savings or my revenues to show that I'm, I'm this, yeah. but I go home and I can't afford a decent meal or make my ends meet, yeah. I'd rather do that because after two or three months, I'll go back and buy that car. Oh, yeah. I'll go back and buy that car, if not a better one. Because what you're doing made you buy it, so you just course. do it again. So if I have to get rid of one to weather the storm, no yeah. problem. Yeah. But as soon as I've weathered the storm, I go and buy a better model. A better one. The most amazing thing at this time is that shame. People are dropping shame, literally. You have to. Yeah. Right now, people are willing to open the boots of their cars and sell. And sell. Mm -hmm. It's survival. It is. Yeah. Did you ever think that we would get there? Ever? With this whole middle class? No, but I actually admire yeah, the, the few. And I've read, I think, an article or something on social media. Yeah. Some are lawyers, some are doctors. Yeah. Like good, like high yeah. level positions. They actually give you their and, card. When and, you buy and you're buying it from there. But I really respect them and admire them because that is what it's about. Not just yeah. because you have a title doctor or lawyer or advocate. You can't do that because they want their family to survive as well, right? And eat, put they food on the plate, yeah. school fees, rent, whatever it is. So. Those are, those are the, those are the, that's the example you should do even follow. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with what they're doing. Because the kids don't care. But, but if, the, if anything, what they're doing is the right thing. It's amazing. It yeah? is, it is, it is. If only we can keep up that state of mind. Mm -hmm. Because it's the state of mind of, I'm doing what I'm doing, it is what it is. It, correct. <laughs> correct. 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 It is what it is, I owe no one an apology. True. Yeah, everyone is just trying now to, to survive and, and, and see things that way. That is correct. The other thing is, um, they say, never waste a good crisis. It Correct. carries the best opportunity. Good opportunity, yes. What are you seeing in this crisis, in your sector? In my sector, it's that I'm able to still to deliver at the same timelines and quality with the less stuff. Yeah. Others are not able to do that. Oh, with a leaner team. With a leaner team. <clears throat> and also keeping in mind all the, all the, um, measures that have been given by the government. Yeah. So health and safety, all our staff are tested, everything is clear. Yeah. Well, so also credibility towards our clients is much better. Yeah. But, also, oh, yeah. but also in this scenario, not only in my business, but also other industries that I invest in yes. is what I'm looking at. Because that's where, mm. that's what, now we have to think COVID business, yes. how to adapt to it. Yeah. Because it's going to be here, we don't know for how long. It could be here for... For a very yeah. long time, but yesterday I saw a video of a Nigerian doctor saying that she's, there's a possible... Oh, yeah, 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 I saw that. She's secured, I don't know, 350 odd. Yeah, and no one and died. And no one died, not even, whatever, with asthma, um, diabetes, and old that, age. What she's saying is literally very simple. It, straight up. So, now, I'm hoping that's true. Yeah. I'm hoping it works because I'm not a doctor, I don't understand yeah. any of that. Hopefully it's true. But 
you see, hopefully that would be... Because uh, that's accessible and that's affordable is, as well. It is. And it's also, that means it will be a short-term problem to sort. Yeah. It will, it's not something we can, it will be something we can predict, should I say. Yeah. Right now it's so unpredictable. That's why even your investments now, you're very cautious about also your cash flows. Yeah. You know, your reserves. Mm-hmm. Where, should but I, should I not? How long. Should I, should I not? Mm. That uncertainty. Yeah, I was talking to someone and they were telling me, this could be an endemic. So, okay, I thought, okay, endemic, meaning that this could be something that will live with us. Mm-hmm. It's like your AIDS now. Yeah, they were saying that. Okay. Some say it's like the common cold when it first came yeah. out. But who knows? Lived with it. So, anyway, however it is, life has changed. Life has changed. Definitely. Completely. Definitely. Yeah. Even your mindset, the way you do things, yeah. the way you spend, mm. the way you do business. Yeah, true, true. The way you employ now. Because there are a lot of things you can you can do mm. your, that you have employed three others to do. Yeah, true, true. Although okay. it's unfortunate for jobs. It's un- yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's a challenge. It is for people to adapt. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the gig economy. Mm-hmm. So we are looking at a shift every time there is a crisis, whichever crisis. So so crisis have. Every 10 years, there is a crisis of sorts. Okay, yes. Every 100 years, there is a bigger crisis. Bigger crisis. Mm-hmm. So, last crisis, uh, 2008. Finance, yeah. yeah. Subprime mortgage in the States. Uh, the whole financial system crashed. The, yeah. 10 years before the dot-com bubble. Dot, mm-hmm. 10 years before, 10 years the before. Fin- all the way yes. to the 1800s. Mm-hmm. 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 So, this is not necessarily a new thing. But, every time the crisis like this happens, then the gig economy is born. The last time it happened, mm-hmm. Alibaba boomed. Boomed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uber boomed. boomed. Mm-hmm. So, so what, what do you say about the gig economy currently in terms of now people will need to now rethink and now look at things as a gig because the certainty that used to be then is, is not there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's your take on on that so that's a that's a very good question right now i'm actually also i'm not sure <laughs> i'm actually not sure <laughs> yeah but yeah you got to we we got to definitely th- the think out of the box and see which sectors can because this is something is not a very normal situation you see the financial bubble burst it, you could predict yeah it blew it uh, the stocks went down it went yeah. down it will take 10 years to recover it was easier to, to foresee yeah this is something that it's very hard to gauge right now. I think at the stage we are in, yeah, it's very hard to gauge. It's I, not even like a war. It's an invi- a war. You can go talk and do ceasefire, ceasefire, whatever, or the white flag, or yeah. here we are fighting something we can't even see. And there's no ceasefire by the yeah. end. Of this day. It's when and if or maybe. Yeah. So it's something very early to think about the gig, in my opinion. True, true. What do you say? This this thing would it? Do you, what's your prediction? <laughs> it's really wrong, but what's, what's on your mind in terms of what do you see? Do you see this thing another quarter, another six months, another year? Because everyone is guessing. Everyone's, it's a guesswork right now, yeah. but for now I'm taking a day as it comes. Okay. A day as it comes, adapt, keep working. Because if I start now thinking that till next year I'll not be able to do this, this, yeah. I'm not even focused on what I'm getting today. <laughs> so I'd rather true. just take a day as it comes. And it will cripple you by the because, way. Because you, and also now it makes you even negative in your mindset. Yeah. And anxious. Yeah. Anxious. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if. Yeah. So now you start focusing on that. Yeah. And losing on what you have now. True. So take a day as it comes. And then, God willing, the sooner the better. Yeah. yeah. So 75% of the businesses in SME sector vanished. What do we do with those people? Those are, those are millions of people. When yes. What, what's that? What, so in the States, currently it's about 50 million people have lost their jobs. Correct, 50 yeah. 50 million is Kenya, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's, yeah. that's a nation mm-hmm. jobless. In Kenya, I think we're now at seven. Seven or eight, somewhere there. Seven, eight. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. Remember when the government was saying that we'll create 500,000 jobs? Jobs, yes. A whole government. Mm-hmm. Now think of it that we have seven million. Million. Mm-hmm. Nairobi is five million ish, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's Nairobi and taking Machakos. Yeah. Yeah. You could say that. What do we do with these people? Of course we have to create <laughs> jobs. <laughs> but um, it's unfortunate, but 
again, if we can get some loan financing yeah. for SMEs. From, from who? China? Uh, it could be China, it could be the government, something that yeah. we, but, but we pay back, of course in a reasonable rate but again during this covid the government again has spent a lot of money yeah, so there's there's a lot of things that will lean on this because as the situation continues yeah jobs will decrease they they have to yeah they it's the, it's that's the that's the pattern i guess yeah so if it continues that way more jobs loss so our growth rate goes lower yeah like i said earlier and our unemployment goes up goes to insecurities etc so that means, again, we will not fight with ex imports, nothing. Because yeah. we don't have the negotiation power. Yeah, we do, and we don't have collateral. So again? Yeah, that's crazy. It because is. you know, a government borrows against the productivity of its people. People. Everyone knows that the productivity is Correct. going down. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that becomes a challenge. But there is an interesting uh, conversation as well that I've been, I've been looking at different crisis, different uh, empires and things like that, all the way from ancient history. And they say there comes a time when government in infrastructure or public infrastructure shakes. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, it's time for private infrastructure to take over. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you see it that way? I guess again it will just depend on the framework of the country and which countries we or continent we are talking about. Yeah. But right now I don't if if we as a continent of course we have individual companies that are doing very well in our yes. country. Yes. But I don't think they will be in a position to support the entire economy. They or, can't. or they can't. So again also they have a business that they are running. And they they are at defense mode currently. Of course. Self preservation. So this is, I think that will be quite difficult for private sector to take over. It's yeah, it's, it's ambitious. It, eh? it, but you never know. There could be a percentage that you can contribute. Yeah, yeah, true. Because the new hero will be the guy who will create employment. Correct. But the question is, how? But if if he's creating employment, means there's a demand for his good. But if yeah. if there's less employment, yeah, who's affording to buy those goods? Yeah, because spending power is is low. going low. Mm. But the money is somewhere. Should be. Because ideally the money didn't, no one came and took the money out. Out. The money is, is, it should be. It's hiding somewhere. It should be. So how do you get the money from hideout? Now because that, in every crisis, people hold. Of course. But now the confidence right now, yeah. uh, without confidence, you're not going to release the money. So people. You're going to hold on. Because mm. imagine you lost your job and you've saved X amount. Yeah. You're going to use that very wisely until you find a job or you know what's going to go on. Because it's depleting. As I said, very interesting. Because like, the, our government have done a brilliant job for this yeah. COVID. Like, I, like, but you see, for example, now imagine the bars, right? Yeah. yeah which, is, yeah. which was very good. I, I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. But you see now, you see the logic, suppliers, yeah? sub suppliers or the logic for sure, interaction, you know, yeah. It's it's I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree and with people that. Are pushing and we, it. And we have very many bars. Yes, we have. And if you're unemployed, if you're depressed, you go to the bar. You finish work early, you go to the bar. If you are celebrating, you, you go to the bar. <laughs> you, so so the, I totally I totally support that. But on the on the contrary is that now the suppliers, the demand will now drop. Whoever yeah. supplies the alcohol. Mm. That's a that's a that's a hit, eh? Okay. Then it, uh, also the revenues for that s establishment. Then also the staff will be reduced because we don't yeah. need so many. Inevitably. Guests. Yeah. So for thirty days, nothing. But and how many bars do we have? I don't know, but I know that we have yeah, very there many. many. There are many. So, some, to some people, they thought that it was an attack to a sector. I think it's to protect us in the best way. It was protection to the people, not to, an attack to a sector. No. Mm. And what about restaurants? They've See, rest hit, restaurants, yeah. are, they've been hit, of course, because if you go to a restaurant and you enjoy your glass of wine yeah. and now you can't have it, yeah. it you say, okay, I'll just have it at home. Because mm. at, le at least I'm allowed. I'm allowed. So the traffic as well goes down. Yeah, naturally. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, very interesting. So when, when, 
when we, we look at things in, in this sense, I want to expand it. You, you had the conversation you're having with the guys in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. what, are they, what are they seeing? How is it from their perspective? It's pretty much what we've been discussing actually, it's similar, not it's quite similar in the sense that everyone's trying to adapt. Yeah. But now a lot of, uh, a lot of um, cost, uh, cost cutting has been, imp so now a lot of them have moved their offices home. Because mm -hmm. everything now I can talk to, I'm still doing business over my Zoom. Mm -hmm. So do I really need a physical presence? Yeah, and it's working. It's working, I'm still getting paid. Yeah. So do I need a physical presence? You actually don't. So I save that cost. So yeah. things like that is what they were discussing, that physical presence. So or same thing there. Yes. More or less across the continent. Across the continent. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I've been looking at, um, they say, India is the new China. Mm -hmm. First, do you believe that the factory or the kitchen of the world is now switching to, to India? The reason why they're saying that is because China was the new, was the kitchen, mm -hmm. the existing mm -hmm. kitchen. But now China is now taking over the role that the U.S. had mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the, the leading economy. Mm -hmm. So when they take that role, then everything changes from their perspective because now it's, it's a dominance game. But now the kitchen shifts. Mm -hmm. And they say it's the tech kitchen especially because mm -hmm. technology and all that. Mm -hmm. And now people are thinking about the future of tech and things like that. When you look at it that, like that, do you, then people are saying that now Africa becomes the new consumer. Mm -hmm. So, so how, how do you see, from your perspective, how do you, where do you see the world go? Because at, as an enterprise, then as you grow, you see some horizon. Mm -hmm. What do you see? That's what they are saying about the world is shifting that way. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you see? For now, I still, don't, I still feel, for now, yeah. China will still remain in the kitchen. Uh -huh. The second kitchen or the kitchen at India. India. Yeah. Leading still the US. Mm. Because I'm looking at the COVID yeah. and also the election coming up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. true, true. That is and a very this, big yeah. player. It's, it's this year. Yeah. It's a very big player. So I would I would You can't dismiss them. No, you cannot do that, no. Because that will also make a big decision in uh, cross border agreements, yeah. relations between countries, business, tax barriers, all these things. Yeah. So depends who's in who gets in power will be now the one to negotiate those terms, I believe. What do you see of Africa? Africa we I don't think we're in a bad spot. Uh, okay. Because we've got good international agreements. But I think we need to get more with yeah. different countries to allow the funding, to allow us to assist us in these times, yeah. and also for us to also boost our, our um, production facilities. Yeah. So even at the very least, if we were to get, let's say, a plant from, a plant from abroad that wants to assemble cars, at least they put the assembly plant here, but they give it to the locals to assemble. Mm, not, bring, not bring also their not stuff. Bring, okay, okay. I so see. at least the locals also are benefiting from it. Yeah. Yes, yes, I see that. So something along those lines. So the government therefore will need to give tax benefits Be, and, and uh, things yes, like that. Yes, incentives to allow someone to come yeah. because that way, jobs creation. Yeah. In, and then also the Kenyan uh, economy and currency is earning. Yeah. So it's a it's a win for yes both in the yeah. in the current situation. True, true. Probably just jumping into now your space, your sector. Mm -hmm. Probably talk a little bit about it, then. The next question would be, what's the future of real estate? As people people have been thinking, could Kenya have been in a real estate bubble? The ground is, has softened in terms of real estate demand. Mm -hmm. And now, where, where is the way out for, for, for real estate in Kenya? Okay, so in my sector... A, a layer of questions. Yeah, so. no, <laughs> I'll try to address them somehow. <laughs> So in my in my field, interior design, architecture, design and construction. Yeah. I'm grateful right now. I'm not going to say that there's no demand. There is. 
there is we all do whether it's a shop fit out a house renovation it's still going on very decently and and that is not a necessity product it's a luxury product oh it's secondary by the way Actually, I'm in service. That's oh, service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I'm coming to make your house look good during these times. You rather save that money? Change my lighting. Or do this or do that. Okay, there are people who are doing it, yeah. but the normal, the no, the demand will be less. Yeah. You're gonna go put wallpaper. Uh, rather go buy a crate of uh, what is milk or whatever it is, yeah. and stock it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that is one. Another thing, real estate. I think our pricing will come down, but not only house. It's going to be it's going to be linked to people's if you've taken a mortgage mm. or you've got asset finance on your car you've lost your job yeah you're going to try look at whatever asset you have to to get rid of to to survive yeah so naturally who's got the money is going to be the buying power mm. not, the bias, seller, not the seller not the seller because if if I want to sell to you and I need it yeah it's true so you now it depends how ethical it. how ethical <laughs> the buyer is but yes yeah. you'll end up disposing it for sure yeah so true so what's what do you feel is the future of real estate from from where it has been since last year people people were feeling the slowdown in real estate there was a there was a boom mm -hmm. then it it kept uh, slanting slanting how how do you see it where is the peak I think the are we at the bottom or are we in a regular wave I would say irregular wave because also right now the work we're doing and I see also your colleagues or competitors or yeah they're all working everyone's working I'm not seeing anyone trying to hold back yeah. you know everyone's pushing so I don't feel we're at the bottom and I also do feel this main issue of this covid yeah, is yeah, playing yeah. a part in every question or everything yeah, we do everything. true true so i do believe but we'll bounce back yeah we will that's yeah. for sure makes sense makes sense very nice so i i just just to bring it to a close i would want to 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 get your take to a young entrepreneur an entrepreneur who's who's looking at things probably they're pushed from work now they are having to do business mm -hmm. uh, what what would be your advice to them what do you tell them because they're looking at you and they're saying that's what i want to be they mm -hmm. just don't know the price you've had to pay yeah, true <laughs> again don't think the world is over yeah. it's just, you're still young it's just the beginning yeah like we discussed earlier doctors and advocates are selling fruits from their vehicle true why can't you Maybe. Start that way. You never know. You'll end up buying a, a small piece of land. You make your own. You start uh, growing your own vegetables. Yeah. You go into slowly, slowly supermarkets, export. Yeah. You never know where it'll take you, or you'll meet along the lines. So yeah. it's not the time to give up. It's to find an avenue, whether it's to distribute newspapers, or whether it's to sell milk, or to go door to door delivery of of uh, anything, or whatever kind of opportunity you have, you take it. Yeah. And build your reserve, and then. Give it its time and its course for it to play, because it will always take its time. You'll try something; it will not work. Don't get discouraged. Yeah. Try another one; it will not work. <laughs> try another one; it will not work. But it, one is going to work because you'll keep improving as you go along. How many times do you need to fail to, as a resilient person, and how many times do you need to fail to know that this won't work? <laughs> <laughs> when are you resilient, and when are you just? Just stop. I think, <laughs> I think I think it's to every individual. Okay. That will be it to every individual, and how much self drive and self belief you have. Yeah. So the elastic limit is in you. It's in you. It's not. Uh, it's not. There's no. No one can measure it. No, no. You. It's you. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Because I have uh, colleagues, friends that I've seen who have different elasticities. Yeah. So by the way, one would break at this, and another one and, is okay with it. And one you're like, wow, you fought well, okay, <laughs> you know. So yeah, yeah. So so how how is it for you as a young entrepreneur in this city in Africa at this particular time? Mm -hmm. Not even the COVID time, in just this generation. Mm -hmm. how, how is it for you, and and what do you feel as an African entrepreneur now? 
in this forget about covid mm -hmm. in this generation looking back at our father's generation and the other generation and the far that the good work they've done yeah to build infrastructure to where we are yeah, yeah. How, how do you feel to be an entrepreneur in this time and age? No, I'm definitely grateful to them and also privileged digitally. Yeah, yeah. You know, infrastructure, even if it's just a building, facilities. Yeah. So they've definitely given us a very good setup to get where we are. True. Where they were walking miles a day. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a privilege. It's, yeah, big privilege. Mobile phones. Internet. Yeah. Right. You know, every, the technology has really helped, so it's something that we have, it's, it's allowed us to be where we are. Yeah, yeah. And like it's, what we're doing even right now. It's true. Who didn't have ever done this, no. by the way? We're standing on their shoulders. Yes, to definitely, definitely. Yeah, very true. Lastly, probably just take us through your business, what it is that you do, uh, so that whoever is listening to this conversation can appreciate wider of what it is that you guys do and what you see. Okay, we started as an interior design firm, consultancy basis, that was in 2012, end of 2012. Then we moved into fit out, because our clients were like, but well, who can do this for us? So that was our uh, second division. I see. Then architectural, some say, we love your interiors, but can you do us architectural? So then we combine partners, hands to that, and then we do also the construction, which is- All like are, from ground up. From ground up. So those are like four different divisions that we have. Yeah. Then we have a, a lighting, a lighting division, and a joinery division. Mm. So that is basically complementary services to what my core was. Oh, yeah, you mentioned something interesting about assembly. Yes. For all these fit outs and all yes. these things, do you see a future where assembly will be a, a, a reality for for fit outs, lighting, things mm. like this? Do you do you foresee that or or uh, will African players always depend on the kitchen to ship it in? See, for now, that is what I'm trying to, that's why, that's exactly what I'm doing now. That's why I've started a joinery, because I know I have a certain quality mm. and finish that even if you go to an international shop, you'll say, I'm better than I like this. this touch. I'm better than this, and I can get it locally. Mm. But take a bit more time. Yeah. Don't rush the job. Mm, be honest with the client, but make sure your finish is meticulous and you'll be fine. Yeah, great. Very nice. Truly appreciated. The conversation has been what it is. Thank you. And well. it's an honest conversation. True. Of just two people speaking and throwing in their thoughts. So I'm truly grateful. So am I. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we should do this again. Without Please do. Doubt. Whenever you want. We are neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. In the office and at home. In the office and at home. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Very nice. Truly appreciate it. So Same This, this Same will put it together in uh, audio format and video format. Great. Whoever watches it, I just, my hope is just they just push it on so that the conversation, because they say leaders are born in crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in crisis, like we were saying earlier, we, we need to be as visible and as audible as possible. As possible. Because people are looking for direction. Direction. Yeah. Correct. And, and people are looking for hope. True, true. Yeah, literally. Very, very so, true. So, so when you look at it like that, so probably what are your parting short words of hope in such a time of a COVID crisis? Let's, let's be positive. Let's stick together. Let's help one another hold each other's hands. Yeah. And most definitely, don't forget God. True. True. Very nice. Truly appreciate. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, too. Thanks. Yeah. Asante.